Ciao to Chalam. Ciao to Chalam, everybody. And greetings, brothers and sisters. Ah, we give praise to Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, and our Adono Yache, and our mother Ruaka Kwadoshi. We hope you all have been enjoying the lessons, enjoying the opportunity for growth. Today we're going to be discussing reincarnation, whether it's true or not, according to the scriptures. Can you read the definition of reincarnation, please? Yeah, reincarnation, the rebirth of a soul in another body. That we will look at to see if that actually happens in the scriptures. Can we start at Job chapter 14, verse 10, 12, and 14, please? All right, Job chapter 14, verse 10. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, a man giveth up the spirit, and where is he? Verse 12. So man lieth down, and riseth not, to the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. In verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait, till my change come. Now, we read over that, and we're going to go back into it to see what Job was talking about. Can you read verse 10 again, please? But man dieth and wasteth away. So every man dies. Okay, continue. Yea, man giveth up the spirit. And where is he? Because once you die, you're not on the earth anymore. That's why he said, where is he? <laughs> continue. Verse 12. So man lieth down and riseth not. Because his body is in the earth and his soul is in the chambers, which is called Shoel or hell. Okay. So the heavens be no more. And notice that soul does not rise until the heavens be no more. After Christ's reign, that's when the heavens be no more, because it'd be new heavens and new earth. So you can understand, Job understood that every man has to rise at the second resurrection at the judgment seat of Christ. Continue. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Verse 14, if a man dies, shall he live again? Job asked the question very straightly, because <laughs> sort of reincarnation, particularly, if a man dies, shall he live again? And he answered it. What does he say? All the days of my appointed time will I wait. All the days of my appointed time, because Job understood, once you die, your life is it. You've lived your life on earth. Now you have your appointed time to wait until the end. And what does he say? Till my change come. He said, I will wait till my change come. Now he's referencing what happens to the righteous in the judgment. Because at the judgment, when everyone is raised, the just and the unjust are going to see each other. People that you formerly knew, you're going to see them in the flesh. And then comes the judgment. And everyone will be judged according to their deeds. And the righteous will be changed into angels. So, and you know that's true because... You don't get changed into an angel during the reign of Christ. That's right. So this isn't until the kingdom of Allah. That's right. So you can see how Job was speaking of the end, the complete end of all things here in these verses. Right. We confirm it by what the scriptures say. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 51 to 53, please? Sure. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See, because in Christ's kingdom, not everyone is going to sleep. Right. Some people are going to be there at the end. They're not going to sleep at all. Right? But we shall all be changed. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. That lets you know it's the complete end. It's the last trump. Continue. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is at the end. After Christ's thousand year reign, continue. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So that helps you understand, brothers and sisters. When the scriptures talked about flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Allah, it was literal. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Allah. There will be no flesh and blood when the Father comes down from the heavens. Man will still be flesh and blood in the kingdom of Christ. Because the dead in Christ shall be raised first, and those that are alive shall be caught up unto him at his coming, and they are going to still be flesh and blood men. And the scripture says that a man shall live out his whole life in the kingdom of Christ. So right. That will be impossible in the kingdom of Elohim if we're immortal. So. All right. 
Let's uh, continue to expound on this. Let's look at 2 Baruch chapter 51, please. Let's get more understanding on that. And it shall come to pass when that appointed day has gone by, but then shall the aspect of those who are condemned be afterward changed. That appointed day is the day of judgment. That's when the change will come. Right. That's when all men will live again. Because during Christ's reign, only the righteous are going to get raised from the grave. Right. But at the judgment, everyone is getting raised up. Okay? Right. Let's continue in. Um, I'll Baruch. start back at Baruch 51. Okay. 51. It shall come to pass when that appointed day has gone by. So that's the day of judgment, right? that then shall the aspect of those who are condemned be afterward changed. You see, change is coming for the unrighteous too. Continue. And the glory of those who are justified. For the aspect of those who now act wickedly shall become worse than it is. Right. And they shall suffer torment. Sadly. So it's, it's interesting what you said because you said the righteous and the wicked are going to be changed. There's no way you can go through eternal damnation and not be change to be an immortal. So they're going to receive a change too. But what's going to happen to them after is going to be the big difference. Also, as for the glory of those who have now been justified in my law, who have had understanding in their life, and who have planted in their heart the root of wisdom. So we see those that the root of wisdom took root in, they have a glory to come Continue. Then their splendor shall be glorified in changes. So you see the righteous becoming splendid. Now they turn into immortal beings. Continue. And the form of their face shall be turned into light of beauty. And they may be able to acquire and receive the world which does not die. See, now this is their mortal world. Carnality is being taken away. Continue. Which is then promised to them. For over this, above all, shall those who come then lament that they rejected my law, stopped their ears, that they might not hear wisdom or receive understanding. When therefore they see those over whom they are now exalted, but who shall then be exalted and glorified more than they? So the unrighteous are going to see the change that happens to the righteous. They shall respectively be transformed, the latter into the splendor of angels. And the former shall yet more waste away in wonder at the visions and in the beholding of the forms. For they shall first behold and afterwards depart to be tormented. It's just sad what's going to happen. You see what is going to transpire. And now you understand what Job was talking about when he said, I'll wait till my change come. So you see scripturally, that's when we live again. That's why we should be more encouraged today to do the things that are right and to put away the iniquity and put on the righteousness of Elohim so that we don't have to partake in what the people who are going to go into torments have to partake in. We all desire to be of that splendor, receive that gift of Elohim, the eternal body. That's right. Now, understanding how we are made up. We are made up of body, soul, and spirit. The spirit that was given to us was actually borrowed to us. It does not belong to us. We are given it for safekeeping and we are to return it as it was given to us. That spirit that was given to us is from Allah and that's what made us an active soul. Literally who we are, the person, we are the soul and the spirit that's with us is from Allah and it belongs to him. Okay. And the body is from the earth. That's why dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. Let's look at the scriptures. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 11. For as much as he knew not his maker, and him that inspired into him an active soul. See, our maker inspired into us an active soul. He's who made us alive. Continue. And breathe in a living spirit. So our soul, which is us, was created by that breath of the living spirit that was breathed into us. The living spirit is what keeps us alive while we are merely the active soul. Okay. Continue wisdom of Solomon chapter 15, verse 16 and 17, please. Excuse me. Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 16. For men made them. 
And he that borrowed his own spirit fashioned them. There we see what the scripture says. He that borrowed his own spirit. That lets us know the spirit is not ours. It's borrowed because it belongs to Ahaya. Continue, please. But no man can make Ahaya like unto himself. Okay. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. For being mortal, he worketh a dead thing with wicked hands. For he himself is better than the things which he hath worshipped. Whereas he lived once, but they never. So we see also mortal men, we live once. That's what the scripture is saying. It's further compounded in more scriptures. The false doctrines say that we live multitudes of lives through reincarnation. The scriptures do not agree with that. So that concept of reincarnation is not according to the law and the testimony, and there's no light in it. Can you read Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 6, please? For all men have one entrance into life. We're all born one way. And the light going out. And we all go out one way. And confirmed her by Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Wisdom of Solomon showed we have one entrance into this life. You can only come in through the seed of man in the womb of a woman. That's the only way you come in. And also, it's appointed unto men once to die. It's only one time you're going to die. And then, sadly, if you were wicked, you're going to partake in the second death, which comes at the judgment. That's why the judgment in the book of Revelation 20 is actually called the second death. Because you died in your one life that you had to live, and then you get raised up at the end to be judged for not doing right in that one life and get killed again. That's why Yahweh said, Do not fear them who can kill the body but can't kill the soul, but fear him who can kill your soul and your body in hell. Okay? Can you read Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 13, please? Sure. For thou hast power of life and death. Thou leadest to the gates of hell and bringest up again. Hell is a place, a subterranean retreat, where there's paradise on the right hand and there's torments on the left hand. Okay. Verse 14. A man indeed killeth through his malice, and the spirit, when it is gone forth, returneth not. So there we see, scripturally, the spirit does not come back. That spirit that was borrowed does not come back into the earth again. Right. Scripturally, that's what it says. So there's no reincarnation of your spirit coming back and you being someone else, as the reincarnation concept would say. Yeah, they say in the Bible about John being Elijah. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at that on the uh, next part of this. All right, continue. Neither the soul received up cometh again. So notice, the spirit doesn't return, and also the soul once received up. And notice it said received up, because that soul has to go up before Allahayim to be inquired of, before it gets sent down to its place of rest or torment. Scripturally, this verse, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 14, answers the question very clearly. We don't come back once we're gone. We... Don't come back to live another life as someone else or something else, according to Scripture. Our souls are kept in chambers until the numbers of the souls to be created are fulfilled. Then the dead in Christ will rise at the first resurrection, at his coming, but the wicked will not rise from the dead until the judgment day after Christ's thousand-year reign. Let's look at Baruch chapter 23 to understand that all the souls actually Go into chambers and await the end when Yahche comes, and then for the unrighteous when the judgment comes. Second Baruch chapter twenty-three, verse three and four. Okay. For as you have not forgotten the people who are now are, and those who have passed away, so I remember those who are appointed to come. Because when Adam sinned and death was decreed against those who should be born. Then the multitude of those who should be born was numbered. See, it was numbered. Notice, it's not the same people coming back again. Right. There's a certain number of people that have to be born. These are not the same people. Continue. And for that number, a place was prepared where the living might dwell, and so, the dead might be guarded. So we have a place that was prepared where the living might dwell, and then we have a place that was prepared where the dead may be guarded. That's Shoel, or what's known as hell. 
they're actually guarded there, they're kept there. They're not coming back into the earth to live another life. So we see there was the people that passed away. Ahaya remembers the people that haven't even been born yet in this world because he had already set the number from the time that Adam transgressed. Okay. Before, therefore, the number of foresaid is fulfilled, the creature will not live again. There's not going to be a coming to live again until that number is fulfilled. For my spirit is the creator of life, and Shoel will receive the dead. So we see Shoel is going to continue to receive the dead. The souls are going to continue to be there until that foresaid number is fulfilled. This is what the scriptures are telling. That's why Job even understood he has to wait till that appointed time. Everything has to come to pass. It has to be done in its season. He said it very straightly. He said the creature will not live again. So there's no such thing. You can't, yeah. you can't live another life after. That's right. Can you read uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of Ahiah, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of Adonai, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Notice he's now, he's talking about the coming of Adonai. This isn't the judgment. Continue. For Adonai himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of Elohim. Notice it didn't say the last trump like the other verse we read. Right. It says the trump of Elohim. The last trump is at the end. That's at the judgment. But this trump is during Yahweh's coming. Continue. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we see Shoel will then give up the dead because the number had been fulfilled. And here comes Yahweh. Okay. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Adono in the air. And so shall we ever be with Adono. And notice, Paul didn't mention corruption being changed to incorruptible and things of that nature because we're still going to be, ah, y'all willing, we get to partake in this. Those people that partake in it will still be flesh and blood. Okay? Can you read Job 19, verse uh, 25 to 27? That's Job chapter 19, verse 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. This is talking about when Yahweh comes. Job understood. And though after my skin worms shall destroy this body. So Job knew his body was going to rest in the earth because there's an appointed time. He has to wait till the end. Continue. Yet in my flesh shall I see Allah. Yet in my flesh shall I see Allah. He understood the righteous are going to be raised. The righteous, those that are Christ, would be raised when Christ comes, and they will be in their flesh. This is speaking of the time in Yahweh's kingdom, man will be flesh and blood still. Okay? Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. So it's not going to be somebody else living the life for him. Right. It's going to be him. The same soul that dwelt in the body of the man named Job is going to be the same soul that's going to be in the body of the man named Job when he's raised That's to right. see Allah with his own eyes. Though my reigns be consumed within me. Can you read Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 through 6, please? Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. This is when Yahshua comes. This is after he's come and bound Satan, right? And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua and for the word of Allah. Mm -hmm. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, nor had received his mark upon their foreheads mm -hmm. or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Meshiach a mm -hmm. thousand years. So you see those souls lived. They came back flesh and blood and they lived and reigned with Meshiach a thousand years. Continue. Verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. The unrighteous did not get to live in the kingdom of Mashiach. This is the first resurrection. You see, that's the first resurrection. That's the time of Christ's kingdom. The second one is going to be at the judgment. Continue. Verse 6, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. That's right. On such the second death has no power. That's right. The second death is referring to the day of judgment. Those that are raised in Mishiaka, second death has no power over them. Okay? That's the resurrection, the first resurrection to come, people being raised in flesh and blood. 
When everyone dies, they are shown they have to come back to the same body, so there can be no reincarnation. Can we look at Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 14, please? Sure, Apocalypse of Paul 14. I indeed, when I had heard this, sighed and wept, and said to the angel, I wish to see the souls of the just and of the sinners. So Paul asked Traley to see it, and this is great because we want to understand, is there such thing as reincarnation, and what actually happens when we die? Right. Okay and to see in what manner they go out of the body. Very straight question, right? right? And this is going to confirm the scripture that said, The Spirit returneth not in wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 14, and the uh, soul once received up cometh not again. Going to get confirmation on the truth of that matter. And the angel answered and said unto me, Look again upon the earth. And I looked and saw all the world, and men were as naught and a wanting. And I looked carefully and saw a certain man about to die. And the angel said to me, This one whom thou seest is a just man. And I looked again and saw all his works, whatever he had done for the sake of Allah's name, and all his desires, both what he remembered and what he did not remember. We've heard about how your life flashes before your eyes before you die. They all stood in his sight in the hour of need. See, that's actually what happens. <laughs> you get shown whether you've done good or whether you've done evil. And I saw the just man advance and find refreshment and confidence. And before he went out of the world, the holy and impure angels both attended. And I saw them all. But the impure found no place of habitation in him. So notice, before he went out of the world, impure angels tried to resist him, but they had no place. This is when he was dying. They, they stand around him. Oh, right. Uh, I'll read it again. Oh. It said, um, This one whom thou seest is a just man. I looked again and saw all his works, whatever he had done for the sake of Allah's name, and all his desires, both what he remembered and what he did not remember. They all stood in his sight in the hour of need, mm-hmm. and I saw the just man advance and find refreshment and confidence. And before he went out of the world, the holy and impure angels both attended. Like before his soul came out of his body. Oh, so they all stand right there. Because he ain't ascended yet. When he starts ascending, that's when he gets stopped. All right, right. Sure. the gun. Sorry so, about that. And I saw them all, but the impure found no place of habitation in him. But the holy took possession of his soul, so now okay. the holy took him. Okay, right. thank you for the edification. Thanks okay. for the correction there. Guiding it till it went out of the body. Okay, okay, right, right. And they roused the soul, saying, Soul, know thy body once thou goest out, for it is necessary that thou shouldest return to the same body on the day of the resurrection. There we have, brothers and sisters, to understand what the scripture is saying, what would transpire. This is what is to come. Okay. That thou mayest receive the things promised to all the just. And we know what's promised to all the just because we read about the change that's going to come, the glory they're going to receive. Continue. All right. I'm in verse 15. And he saith to me, Look again down on the earth and watch the soul of the impious man going out of the body, which vexed Ahia day and night, saying, I know nothing else in this world. I eat and drink and enjoy what is in the world. For who is there? who hath descended into hell, and ascended, hath declared to us that there is a judgment there. And again I looked carefully and saw all the scorn of the sinner, and all that he did, and they stood together before him in the hour of need. So now he's going through the same process, right? He gets to see all his evil works. Okay. And now the, the angels, the righteous angels and wicked angels are standing before him before he dies. And it was done to him in that hour in which he was threatened about his body at the judgment. Wow. So his experience was different than the righteous man. He got threatened. Right. Okay. And he said, It were better for me if I had not been born. And after these things, it came at the same time the holy angels and the millennials. And the soul of the sinner and the holy angel did not find a place in it. So you see, the same way for the righteous man, the holy angels and the evil angels, which are the malign ones, they all they attending when you're about to die. Right. Okay, continue. Moreover, the Malay's angels cursed it, and when they had drawn it out of the body, the angels admonished it a third time, saying, O wretched souls, look upon thy flesh which thou comest out, 
For it is necessary that thou shouldest return to thy flesh in the day of resurrection. So even the impious man noticed the malign angels had a right to speak to him and curse him because they had place in him. Right. And then nonetheless, he was also told, make sure you get a look at your body because you got to return to it. So you understand the souls, when you come out of the body, you do not come back in another life or in someone else. You go before I am to be interviewed and inquired of, and then based on your works, you get sent to the place of your reward, whether good or bad. That thou mayest receive the due for thy sins and thy impiety. So we heard how the just was going to have his reward stored up for him, and the impious had his reward to receive the due for his sins and impieties. So that is what happens when we die. So scripturally, reincarnation is not true. Do not come back to live another life as another person or someone else. Our souls go to the receptacles that are there to receive all souls until the said number be fulfilled. And then Shoel will give up the dead. And at the time when Christ comes, the righteous, which are those that died in Mishiaka, they shall be raised up in the flesh and live with Mishiaka in his kingdom. Then after his thousand year reign, all will be raised up. The unrighteous will come up out of the graves and Shoel will give up all the dead, and everyone has to go before the judgment seat of Christ to receive according to his deeds. Okay? Sure. All right, we'll come back and look at all the false doctrines on reincarnation. All right. Thank you. Thank you.